Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we have written a simple, uh, you know, a script, uh, press a script to automate a login page where we have uh, done, we have found an element, written locator for that, perform action and validate whether we are able to successfully log in or not. Now, whenever we are writing automation script, we need to find element that is must because without writing element, you can't do anything, right? So there's two things. One is find a single element and perform certain action on that and then other is finding more than one element and then performing certain action on that as well uh, so finding single element we already have seen if you want to perform you know like enter username in one place you have to find that element and then you know click on element you have to perform you know find one that particular element but in in some instance where for example you have a home page of application which is under test and you have menu items you will have you know home contact and you know other pages gallery and other pages will be there right the menu items now you want to find all the menu items and validate with the list item you have given that this is the list of menus that you should have and in this page find all the elements and then you know validate whether this is matching or not so that can be a scenario and there can be many other scenarios like validating drop down or something or, or maybe a hyperlink of you know web page where you, you will have more than one hyperlinks and validate whether all these hyperlinks are there available in the page or not so let's see how we can make use of or how uh, find element works exactly let's get into our code so let me create one single file called elements.ts now if you want to write uh, you know mocha test you have to say as we have already discussed describe and then type it and all now if you want to do it in a faster way there's an extension available in the visual studio code where you can download and it will generate a basic snippet of mocha directly for you so let's see how we can find it here this is the icon in the visual studio code left side if you see this is the menu item and here in this option called extension click on it search for mocha snippet and you will probably have the first not this is the result this is the icon for mocha not this is the one this one es6 mocha snippet right this is the icon make sure this this one there are many others but make sure you select this one and then click on install it will take a few seconds or minute maybe it depends on the internet speed obviously and then you will see uninstall and disable option that means it's already installed now in your system you can close this now and if you click on this again to see the project structure and now if you type describe as soon as you type you are getting some auto suggestions third option called describe in it because we want describe and we want it as well so let's click on this now automatically you will see the snippet has been generated describe in it we don't have to write all these options right so this is a little bit you know it will help you to write the code faster way let's let me increase the font now here you will say let's say write a feature elements and what do you want to test should what we take example we'll take let's take example of a google.com and let's try to find all the elements or the hyperlinks available in this page so I should find all link text all the hyperlinks available let's find the text for that Obviously, you have to add async because we are writing asynchronous programming in the our driver is asynchronous now. So we have to write async here. Now, first is we have to load the URL. So to load the URL browser dot URL and then the URL you have to provide. So let's copy this google.com. Sorry, let's copy this google.com. And then let's maximize the window as well. Await browser dot maximize window and then now you have to find the elements more than one element before doing anything let's go to the official documentation here in the api section you have browser expand it and then you will see double dollar this is single dollar for find element double dollar is for finding elements so how do you write it there's a sample here given already in the detail that you can follow but you just need to be sure that this is the double dollar which denotes more than one element right so first you have to say you can say const elements equal to double dollar and in single or double quote you have to write the locator now how we'll write a locator to find all the elements so let me inspect it and if you want to find a hyperlink in the html if you have a hyperlink in in any of the page right it will start with the tag called a 
So we, if you want to write a locator X path, you can say slash slash A and it will file all the matching hyperlinks. So let's paste that locator here. So you have multiple elements. Now what you have to do is we need to find all the elements of these tag means matching elements and then get a text out of it. So what you can do first, if you hover your mouse and the double dollar, you will see the return type is chainable promise array element array. That means it returns promise of array like element array it returns with the promise, right? So you're dealing with the promise now. So if it is an array, you have to iterate it through. Now there are different ways of iterating the element. You can write a normal for loop. You can write a for each, or you can write a map, you know, functional programming using map, right? Higher, higher order function. So let, let's see first in a sim very simple or basic way to write a for loop. So you have to iterate and you have to write a for loop. So either you can write completely or you can just type for and you'll get auto suggestion in the Visual Studio code. The second option, if I click, it will suggest to me. So now let me change a few things. Index instead of index, I'll say I and index I, and then press tab, it will go to the element and this array I'll change to elements. And here I'll add a weight because it's asynchronous. So this element will it will consist of the element. Now we have to say here as well a weight, and then you have to say dot get text. Here instead of I can say link text. So what it will do basically, I am writing a for loop, simple programming logic where I am iterating with the zeroth. And until the length of that object, if you have a 10 elements matching, it will iterate 10 times. And then every time it will keep on iterating. This is a basic programming, you know, concept of the for loop. And for the each element, elements of i, that means first time it will be zero, then one, two, three, until the length. And each item so get text it will do, and it will store in this variable. Now let's print it. Console.log mm, link text and just print the value, whatever we are storing, storing in this. So now let's try to see how we can, whether it's really working or not. So I want to run this sample test element. So I'll go to configuration file and I'll run only one of these files. So I'll give the file name elements.ts. Now let me run the command. The command is npm run wdio. We already have seen in the first video and second video as well, right? Or, or, or probably the all the previous videos. So let's click enter and see how it behaves or what output we get. So it's loading the Google dot maximize and close. That means this execution is done. Now let's see, the test has been passed. Let's see whether it's really has printed this or not. So if you keep on scrolling up, there'll be so many detailed logs because there are so many logs available here, which some other day we'll talk about this, what are these logs. But if you notice somewhere, we have a link text, but there is something empty. Here also empty. But if you keep on scrolling, you see something called privacy, how search work, then advertising. So if you go to the Google, we have something called advertising, how search works. And then if you see here, we'll have business, nothing but this one. If you keep going all the way to the top, you'll find something called here about store Gmail. And same thing about store Gmail images and then images. So these are the hyperlink and it is finding the element and even it's printing the text, whatever the text it has, right? And why we were getting few elements as empty? Because there are some hyperlinks available in this page which does not have any actual text. It is empty, that is why it is printing. So if you want to avoid such text, right? Like whichever is empty, you have to say if this element is not equal to empty then only print this one otherwise don't print this that's what we can do and let me right click and format it now because it is showing so many logs it's very hard to find you know the actual output so what i can do we can change the log level in the output in the configuration file so there is something called log level info instead of say i'll say error so whenever any error comes that only display me as a log rest you can hide it and now let me rerun again so now what we did, we just removed if link text is empty, do not print it. So it has executed and if you scroll up right, you will see only these many link text has been printed and there are no other logs because we have suppressed the log. And whichever link text is empty a string, it is not printing. If it is not empty, then only it is printing. And that is why we are seeing these many items about a store to till terms and we have a terms as well, right? So yeah, these many things has been printed. 
all good then so yeah this is all uh, just wanted to show you how you can you know find the multiple elements and then how you can iterate and then you can we have just added a console.log but you can do whatever you like you can perform you know like add, you can get the attribute or you can you know just count the item how many items are there or different ways but this is the way you can find the multiple elements so that's all for this video thank you so much